skill with downright cunning. He pretended to be physically at a disadvantage. He pretended that he wasn't quite as strong as he actually was and lulled uh, Rudy Altig into a sense of security, which meant that Altig, when it came to the sprint, was taken by surprise. And they are going for the line like mad, and Simpson, I think, is going to do it. Simpson is away, he's clear. Simpson has won! Simpson has won the World Championship the first time ever by a Great Britain rider. Il a eu ce fameux maillot arc-en-ciel et c'est certainement le sommet de, de sa carrière. Il entrait dans le club des coureurs les plus richement payés. Il était dans le top 10. With this victory, came recognition back home for Tom Simpson's achievements. The person that you voted Sports News Personality of 1965, he sprinted away with it, world champion cyclist Tommy Simpson. Congratulations and good wishes of all sportsmen and sportswomen in this country. Tom's achievement that year was that he was made Sportsman of the Year by three separate bodies, including the BBC and he'd achieved a depth of public recognition that no cyclist has achieved since. I'm very pleased and very surprised to receive this, this honour, because it is a very big honour for, for me and cycling. I'm so surprised that I haven't got a speech prepared. <laughs> Gimondi, Balmagnon, Janssen. Tom Simpson a craqué lui aussi, il a dû laisser partir les quatre. As the 13th stage moved further up the Ventoux, through its pines and ancient oaks, Simpson began to slip back. He tried to attack, to regain time on the leaders. It was now or never. When he jumped, I, I'm sure I shouted, you know, die, die, we shout, die, die, you know, like kill yourself, basically, you know, to get up there, knowing that he could get up there and He'd, he'd, he'd realize his dream. This kind of all-out attack brought sensational wins for Simpson in one-day races, but was always complicating his attempt to win outright the Tour de France. By 1967, there was a consensus in the peloton that Tom's strong point, his uncompromising attitude, was a weakness faced with the Tour's three weeks of non-stop racing. Vous savez, un coureur qui veut arriver premier à Paris, il n'attaque pas tous les jours, il n'attaque pas tout le temps, il garde toujours des forces, il garde toujours des forces pour des objectifs pour l'étape contre la montre et pour gagner. Alors, forcément, euh, avec son tempérament, on avait des doutes qu'il que, qu puisse un jour gagner le Tour de France. Two years earlier, in 1965, Simpson tried to battle to Paris with a list of complaints. He started off with a cut in his hand which became infected. He ended up with a blood infection, a kidney infection and bronchitis. And the doctor had to make him stop. Tom would have gone on to Paris if he'd had his own way, but he had to be stopped for his own good. In 1966, he rode wearing the rainbow jersey that crashed during an all-important mountain stage. He attacked on the biggest alpine stage. He was in a good position when he was hit by a car and descent and fell off. The next day, against doctor's orders, he continued until he realized that there was no point in going on because he'd cut his arms so badly that he actually couldn't hold onto the handlebars, he couldn't break, and there was a major amount of descent coming up. He didn't like um, having to abandon the tour. Now, in defeat, another side of Tom Simpson was revealed. He went very into himself, very quiet, and didn't, um, you know, didn't talk very much. And I knew that, you know, it, we just had to sort of let him come round. 
um, and and uh, be treat him gently. Perdre et abandonner pour un coureur normal, c'est un petit accident. Mais pour un champion, pour un homme d'exception, c'est quelque chose d'insupportable. Tom must have felt an enormous frustration with the tour. He was an immensely competitive man. The fact that he couldn't improve on his incredible performance in 1962 must have eaten away at him. The fact also that the tour was where you earned the bulk of your money as a professional cyclist because that was where you got notoriety which would earn you the, the big contracts in the appearance races, that would have been at the back of his mind as well. Ce deuxième groupe avec Johnny Schlecht qui lui s'était reprécipité vers l'avant, c'est Van Kloster. Tom Simpson, le tort. As Simpson's first attack on the Vong Tu failed, he dropped further back to a second group. Even before the 67 tour and this 13th stage, there was concern in the peloton that the ways and means which would help Simpson achieve glory might also consume him. Dans les derniers mois de, de son existence, avant, que, avant le drame du Ventoux, euh, certains coureurs euh, commençaient à s'étonner euh, de son changement de comportement. Euh, Roger Pinjon, qui a gagné le Tour de France euh, cette année-là, dit qu'il commençait à exagérer. Euh, Michel Nedelec, qui était un autre coureur du groupe Peugeot, qui l'accompagnait dans le Critérium, euh, raconte que, que Simpson, les derniers mois, manquait de lucidité, qu'il avait tendance à abuser un peu des, 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 des produits dopants. Que nous ne quittions plus le peloton de tête, Dans les derniers kilomètres de l'ascension. Now, here on the Bontou, in front of Lucien Neymar, was the evidence. Vous savez, dans le Bontou, on est chacun pour soi, euh, on n'est pas là pour, pour discuter, mais je me tourne vers Tom, je dis Tom, fais pas le con, reste dans la roue. Parce que je, je l'aimais bien, Tom, donc reste dans ma roue, donc je, je le protégeais pour aller, j'assumais le, donc, le protéger, j'assumais la. La, la vitesse pour monter. Et la deuxième fois, il a encore attaqué. Alors je lui dis, mais reste tranquille, Tom, euh, on, on va limiter les dégâts. Et puis il y a des gens qui me passaient des bidons pour boire, et j'ai tendu une deux fois le bidon. Il m'a pas, il m'a jamais répondu, il montait comme ça, comme, comme l'automate. Where the tree line ended, the heat now combined with the altitude to make an unforgiving environment. Vous avez la première partie dans les arbres. Il euh, y, y a une forêt au pied, et tout d'un coup, vous sortez de la forêt, et là, c'est la, c'est la, c'est la canicule. C'est une sorte de cauchemar, c'est-à-dire c'est un paysage lunaire. Euh, une caillasse blanche, le, le, les, les pierres qui réfléchissent aussi le, le soleil. La chaleur est écrasante, c'est une chaleur un peu crématoire. It suddenly feels if you're going into an oven, you kind of go, you can feel you've got no air, you know, and you gasp. And I know the first thing you do is knock your gear down one. He was struggling to breathe. You were taking serious, serious deep breaths and, and just rasping with the pain of the deep breaths would sort of have this effect on your chest. It was uh, physical agony. I've, I've never experienced anything like it since or before. It was uh, the worst I've ever been on a bicycle. Then you saw the observatory in the distance. That was another five or six k's to go. Sa course est maintenant différente puisqu'il dispute.